with more ReZero content. This is episode 10, review from Chibi from eight years ago. That cliffhanger. Did we not just... Hold up, let me go back to the previous video. Episode 9, hold up, wait, wait, wait. Uh, this is 11, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's go to episode 9. Wait, that cliffhanger. That cliffhanger. I'm so freaking upset with that cliffhanger right <laughs> That cliffhanger. <laughs> that cliffhanger. <laughs> that cliffhanger, bro. Dude, I just wish. <laughs> I just. Dude, I just went back and forth from both videos, and he still has the same hand motion. That cliffhanger. <laughs> it looks like he's in the same video, dude. That. Yeah. I had the original source. I wish I had. The light novel, actually, to read. I talked about yeah, because we don't have the moon runes, right? This last week, but I seriously, I just need to yeah. nail that down. I yeah. really, really wish I had some content to read. My man, if you truly wanted to read the light novel, you would go out of your way to understand kanji. Yep. If people truly say that they want something, but they don't do it, it means that you don't want it enough. You should have learned the Japanese in a fucking week, Chibi, and read the fucking ReZero Light novel. After these episodes end, because this... I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit sick of these cliffhangers. They're giving me the bad middle finger every week. It's okay. really getting me mad. Now, that's a good thing. That, that means you're enjoying the anime. You want to see more, which that is 10 out of 10 right there. That's very good. Still... As a person that is mm. used to watching anime and having content to read past if I felt like it, it, it's just, it's so ironic. The first time I actually want to pass the and anime you can't the have it. I'm currently started with, the first time in a long time I want to read past the content of the anime. We're over 10% of the video now. Nine minute video, about one minute in. And still haven't talked about the anime. Bro is farming so fucking hard, bro. Let's just, let's just talk about the show. Anime, I can't. And I'm like, because mm, I, I get want that. to know. I yeah, want me to too. Know so bad, and me I can't. Too. It sucks. You know, amongst my stress of not having the content because I couldn't find, you know, the, yeah. the next part, I couldn't find a light novel translator or anything. I came across that there is apparently a web series of ReZero. Yeah, okay. apparently. ReZero has like 200 or 300 fucking chapters? I mean, okay. what the fuck? Like, yeah, seriously, there's a webcomic series similar to One Punch Man. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I was real- Motherfucker, is this a web novel fucking advertisement or an episode 10 review? I'm getting scammed in every video. I'm really surprised to find out that there was something beyond the light novel. And I'm like, damn, why isn't this being translated? So why, why isn't there- no, no. Two minutes in! No, anyway, We're okay, running out of time! Let's, let's talk about the content of this said episode. Thank I'm you! You just padded two minutes! Listen, if it was a 20 minute video, I wouldn't care if you had a two minute intro. But you have such short videos and now we don't have time to talk about the show! Be on it all day. Because, damn it, I love ReZero so much. It's a series I love every Sunday to watch. And it's a perfect way to just wrap up the day besides Game of Thrones. Of okay! But this right here... Okay, let's this talk. episode, mm. it's progression. That, that's okay. exactly what this is. Like, quick summary, if I had to say one word, progression. Because what does that mean, progression? We made a lot of progress because this time we woke up and Ram was saving us and she's going out there and killing a bunch of the fucking hellhounds, the witch fiends, and we have a curse. But even though we have half a day left before we die because of the activation of the curses, we actually did progress beyond just getting slaughtered in the house. Because... Finally, for the first time in a long time, since like the second half of the, you know, the first part of the series started. Yeah. Subaru is now actually making progression. He didn't die after the events of yep. last week's episode. He still continued to breathe, but there is. And I don't know if we have a new checkpoint just yet. Because that hasn't been confirmed, obviously. Because says every time that we wake up from a new bed, I'm like, oh, is this a new checkpoint? I wonder, but I doubt it. Until this whole thing gets resolved, there should be a new checkpoint after. But I... I don't think that will either, I don't think, cause like, obviously there's a little bit of metagaming in terms of like when I know arc two is gonna end because we're trying to figure out when to watch Memory of Snow, right? And episode 11 is when it's over and you know, we just finished episode 10. So obviously there's still one more episode, right? So I'm just gonna assume that, yeah, there's not gonna be another death and there is no new checkpoint yet. And we're gonna resolve this and then we'll get a new checkpoint. Is their own problems. Like there's problems still turning up in this episode for one, 
Subaru has been cursed, and this curse is a lot different than how it was in the past with just one bite. Yeah. With the curse that's currently on him right Multiple now, bites. it's so complex, and the only way to really get rid of the curse is to kill all of the little... By the way, just completely off tangent, um, I hear that chronologically it makes sense to watch Memory of Snow OVA after episode 11, but I hear in the OVA, the last 10 minutes is actually spoilers, right? So now it's just like, what should we do? Do we skip the last 10 minutes? Are the last 10 minutes even important spoilers or not? Right? So people say like, again, I don't know how valid these comments are. It's just random people posting on YouTube and I'll make another video to get to the bottom of it. But some people did say, listen, last 10 minutes of the OVA, that shit fucking spoilers. And if you don't want out of context spoilers that you will, you know, finish. Like basically, if you finish season one, then watch the OVA, then it would be a big deal. But it's just like, people are saying the last 10 minutes, spoilers. And I'm like, oh. I wonder if it's that crippling of a spoiler. Well, you know, mutant demon dogs. That, that's the only way to actually get rid of the curse, to kill the original source of the curse. So, obviously, thinking about that, that's rather hard because it's a big ass forest. There's a lot of those dogs that bit him. And, you know, you're going to have to go hunting down quite a bit. It'll be mm -hmm. a very hard job to do. It's foreshadowing, not spoilers. Okay, I'm still going to make a video. Why? To farm the views <laughs> i don't care <laughs> do. so it seems like it's very hard chances of subaru living are yeah. very very low so of course he's gonna have to put in a lot of work and that's exactly where the next route is currently taking us he's having to figure out how he could you know still help out the maids the maid twins while also trying to save his life and it's and this time it's so amazing how much rem is on our side right as we wake up in the bed in the beginning of the episode, I thought that we were still getting the past memories of when Subaru was getting healed after the incident with Elsa and Betty and Rem and Ram are there in the handholding. But no, 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 no. This is after that. This is the event of what happened when he got, you know, uh, just, just fucked up by the Witch Fiends. And Rem was like, no, no matter what, we need to save him. So clearly Rem has seen the heroics of Subaru. I think that she's pretty much demonically obsessed with us, maybe. Because she's out there risking your life to kill all the witch fiends so that Subaru has a chance to survive. So like, the intimacy, the bonding with Rem, I think is on another level, and we'll have to see what happens after this arc is concluded, and then maybe we'll see the more like, dead dead side, rather than her just roasting us with Rem, and why people think that Rem is like, the best girl of ReZero. It's very different, actually, from some of the recent events in the anime because if we think about it in the recent episodes it's been about Subaru trying to save the maids and stop mm. them from getting cursed or someone yeah. else from dying I mean at first it was him dying over and over but then kind of switched over into him trying to save others and it's back to that how it used to be for instance him trying to save himself before he dies or the actual main focus of this episode was to save Subaru it wasn't yeah. about I'm going to die in the process of things or, you know, someone else is going to die alongside of me. It's not really like that. Now, that could happen. People could probably die. One of the maids could possibly die next to Subaru. But at this time, though, know, the main core, I guess, content of this episode was about saving him. And that's like a first, actually, for ReZero. Kind of ironic if you think. About it. Yeah, because the maids are going out of the way to save him. Before, we're under suspicion. We're trying to survive no matter what. But now we're at a point where they've recognized... You know, the virtues of Subaru. I don't know. They realize that he's not suspicious. He is a good person. He's going out of his way to save the people of the village, the kids. And in turn, what happens? The lord of a domain, right? He is supposed to represent that. So if some bad shit happens in the fucking domain, in the village that Roswell, you know, owns, then it's going to look bad on Roswell. So a more respect towards Subaru for going out of his way to make Roswell look good too. So Rem and Ram are probably like, damn, you know? Like, this kid's not bad. He's actually pretty good. Think about, about a series about a character that always dies, and then he resets and relives to try to survive. It hasn't always just been focused on him. It's been him trying to save others in the process from dying as well. Yeah. And this time, it's just focused on him. He's got to save his ass before he dies. So I like that. I really like, you know, the context of this, you know episode it was really a little bit different from normal and it also got me more engaged because it was a little bit different he's like i gotta save myself it's not about me just saving everybody else but i gotta save myself too so i like that anyways talking about some things we felt out let's talk about the fucking aoe taunt we are spamming this new mechanic of leaking our secrets and 
just like provoking everyone by increasing our witch's stents exponentially for a second. More about demons, like how okay. demons work in ReZero. Apparently, demons are born with two horns. Now, demons... Onis, which is interchangeable with demons. I thought that demons was more like an umbrella term for magical mythical beasts and an oni is more specific right can be born with one horn if they are twins for instance rim and rom it's if they're twins the horns are split up between them uh, like a normal demon would have two horns like a regular demon we normally see in mythology well in this though they if there's twins off. the horns that usually be for one person split up into the two different beasts right and then we're seen as like an abomination because i guess to the oni clan it is the horns represent power and pride and <laughs> Pride. But they split into two, and now it's just like, well, you're fucking half-assing it, and now we should get rid of these children. But for whatever reason, the children were not gotten rid of. Beings, and that's kind of what happens. If the horn is removed, they lose their ability to use, the, like, demonic transformation. Yeah, and apparently Ram had her horn removed. And there was this weird flashback scene where everything is engulfed in flames, which, can I, which I can only imagine as the Oni village. Probably under attack by the witch's cult, foreshadowed by Rem in episode 7. But Rem was the one with the horn at that time, not Rem. And then we see them, and then boom, the next scene is a horn flying off into the sky. And I'm like, who cut that off? Did Rem herself cut that off at that moment? Or did we see some, some of enemy show up that we didn't see before that scene, and then it got cut off? Who knows? We'll find out next episode, I guess. So we get to see how one of the sisters cannot actually use the demonic power, and it explains, like, the power gap between these sisters and the relationship. We got a brief flashback of whatever happened, how the horn was removed, but it wasn't really completely dived into, so there's probably a lot more context to that scene, and we need to find out later on. Most likely after the end of this little mini, I guess, art, this next part or whatever, we're probably going to find out more information about yeah. it. But however, though, finding out now how demons work was really fascinating. I love it when there's some world building and stuff going on in series like this, especially a series I really enjoy. And seeing the content in this episode with finding out more about how the demon transformation works, how they can heal very fast, and also how they can kind of lose their sanity when they are continuously using this ability. Yeah, because like the regeneration is massive. Rem basically healed all her wounds that we saw at the end of episode 9 due to that phase. But also the sanity seems to be crumbling. She's still, like, she did attack Subaru here and there, but, like, she's still most of the time fighting against the Witch Fiends. Wonder if there's, like, a point of no return where she's been in the form too long and she just goes to Berserk and it gets out of control. But we pretty much handled that. Subaru, you know, hit her in the bonk in the fucking horn and I think it's gone now. It's pretty cool because, I mean, we get to see where Subaru almost died. And I'm willing to bet that brought back some serious PTSD. I mean, we already know he was freaking out the other episode, episode beforehand when he saw the weapon. But then in this episode, he dodges it. I mean, if you would have probably never yeah. have saw that weapon to begin with Scary and that was shit. the weapon that killed him, I'm willing to bet he might have gotten hit by it. No, I don't see the PTSD with the wind magic that Ram uses. But I guess, again, because... In episode 7, Ram kills Subaru at the very end, but again, it's just a very swift attack to the throat. You can't really visualize, see that, so you can't really get traumatized by something that you didn't really understand, I guess? Because he wouldn't have expected the fast reaction speed of it. Still, it's just kind of crazy, though. Even in the action, like the action in this episode was really on point. Animation, yes. action. Throwing Ram. <laughs> Dude, yeeting, yeeting Ram. <laughs> Where the fuck did that scene come from? There's these moments where I think it even happened during the Elsa fight where even though things are dire, even though things are very problematic and we're in the heat of the battle, there's these moments of brief comedy that kind of makes me just kind of feel like we can do this. Like this is fun almost like when Subaru, for example, in the Elsa cellar, like when he fucking broke the fourth wall and did the poses and like was calling out different, you know, cliches and flags talking to the audience. It's like he's basically flexing, right? He's basically emoting. It's in the middle of the fucking battle, he should be locking in, but those kind of moments gives me, like, I don't know, triumphant feelings, or it's like, everything is gonna be good. Same with yeeting Ram. Yeah, that, that's just, that shit just came out of fucking nowhere. We threw her. She was so cute, but just fantastic overall. All that very nice, and I enjoyed it from start to finish. The episode felt like four minutes to me. It really did. And as I've always said, anytime I watch an episode and it feels like that, it means it's a good episode. I was entertained, and that's all I want out of a series. I want entertainment, yeah. and that's exactly what it gave to me. It felt like a short episode, which wasn't bad. Let's talk about Subaru spamming his AOE 
echoey taunt. Come on, boy. Let's go. It just means I enjoyed it to that degree, and which makes the cliffhangers hurt so much worse because you want more content. True. So yeah, overall episode, I like what direction it went. I wonder if Subaru waking up in the bed at the beginning of this episode is implying that that's the new checkpoint. Maybe. I'm curious about that because that would mean that at the end of this episode, he might die. There's a possibility he's going to die. And but again, me just meta gaming because the series has been out for eight fucking years and there's only one more episode until memory of snow, snow oviation. <laughs> yeah, we're probably going to solve it tonight, right? And we'll see where that goes right there because, I mean, he woke up out of the bed and if we go back to how... You know, ReZero has kind of been in recent times or how it's been in each arc we've gotten. Usually Subaru wakes up or something or something's going on. I mean, the yeah. first one. Yeah, the Alpha guy's a bit different. Like we were standing, we just appear in front of him. But after that, I guess it was the bed. And now I'm thinking that it may be a bed again. Was him kind of coming conscious from, you know, his restart in front of the merchant. The second one, what the main focus of this later half of. Yo, what's the Appa guy doing, man? Is he still around? Like, we haven't seen him in a long time. Him and Romji, man. I want to see them back. Zero was, was focusing on him waking up out of the bed. And then in this one, he wakes up out of the bed as well. So I'm curious if that was another checkpoint or if he was to die now, would he go all the way back to the beginning? Who knows? That's another thing, too. I mean, just imagine. If he was to die at this moment, it, it's just hypothetical. Let's just say he does die, even if he lives, okay? Let's just say he lives, he's fine. I don't think he would be as depressed because this run, everything is going well. There is hope in this run. He knows what to do and it's worked. And yes, we died because of dog curses, but we can avoid that. If I were Subaru and I died during this run, I would not be depressed. This time I'd be like, you know what? That was a fucking amazing run. It's a miracle that we even got that far. Let's go even further this time. If he was to die right now, would that bed scene he got, is that a checkpoint? Who knows? If, if that's not a checkpoint, that would mean that he has so much more to lose. It would be absolutely ridiculous to lose all that time he had when making the maids trust him and then, you know, going out there to save the children and then la ending up in bed. And all For sure. It would suck. But again, it doesn't feel like a hopeless run. Other times where we died and we were depressed, it was because there was no hope. Everything we did did not work out. We have no answers, even more questions, and we're fucked. But this time, it's different. Also finding out that he's cursed completely, that right there would have been absolutely ridiculous. Imagine how he would feel if he realized he had to redo all that. that that's like something like you get to the in-game boss. Like yeah. Imagine if you're doing a playthrough for like, oh god, let's say you're playing for nine hours straight on a game. Nine hours. And... For sure, losing the time progress would suck. But again, compared to the other runs where it felt hopeless, I think this is a pretty good one. And you went from like the second boss in the game all the way We're one minute away from the video ending and he didn't talk about the fucking witch mechanic. Like... Why? Why are we not talking about the witch mechanic? Why are we not talking about him spamming the AoE provoke? Every time he leaks it, he overcomes the fear of Satala gripping his fucking balls. And he almost leaks, which in turn creates this surge of witch stench, which draws attention from the Ma Beast, which is an amazing mechanic, right? Subaru is figuring out different ways to be useful in a fight, and I enjoy that. ...to the final boss, and then your power cuts out. Your fucking power just cuts out. And you had auto-save off, so you had to manually save, but you forgot to save. What the fuck you think is gonna happen? You're resetting all that damn progress back to the start, and you're like... Fuck. Re starting from zero. I, I, you know, just that's kind of how I would feel if I was zero. All this progress you made just getting reset because you decide not to save. Now, of course, he can't control his save points or checkpoints or whatever, but you get the point I'm getting at. What if, if mm. he was to die, how far would he go back? How does he. Mm, right now, I'm probably guessing uh, Mansion, the beginning of Arc 2. But who knows, right? Maybe he could wake up in the bed, but again, we're. Probably not going to find that out because this is going to get wrapped up in another episode. Get a checkpoint, exactly. I, I wish that was clarified. I wish we kind of knew how Subaru got checkpoints. Is it if he encounters a situation where he almost dies and then he gets kind of brought back, does that mean that that's a checkpoint? I'm curious about that as well. So overall, though, I think the checkpoints are pretty arbitrary so far. There's no enough data points to convince me otherwise. There's only been two checkpoints, right? So it just seems like any time we've sort of like uh, overcome a challenge, right? And then a new checkpoint is made. I don't know exactly what triggers it, but a considerable amount of challenge must be overcome. And then next time we're in a new setting, maybe a checkpoint happens, but exactly when or how, I'm not sure. 
enjoyable episode, rather enjoyable. Can't wait to see how next week's episode is. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. My thought is that the witch mechanic is very interesting. How he was so scared before to use it, and he could never even tell Amelia that. But now, trying to save Rem and Ram, he sees how much they're in danger, how much they're going out of the way to sacrifice themselves for Subaru. He's able to overcome that fear and just, you know, fucking feel the grab, the, the fucking gorilla grip of Satala's hands on his balls, and he spams that shit. I don't know what other consequences there are other than spiking his witch's stench for a short duration, but Subaru, of course, he. He can fight, but obviously he doesn't have like crazy magic powers just yet or any sort of crazy combat abilities like Reinhardt. So it's cool to see how a seemingly quote unquote useful character is figuring out different ways to be more utility support. Maybe later he will be in a position of leadership where rather than him being in a battle by himself, I still don't see him in like a battle. He's kind of like a Kazuma, you know, where Kazuma, he's not a frontliner. He's not. Right? We got other people to manage that. He is, he's like a thief, rogue, right? He maintains this kind of like, almost like a leadership position, you know, strategy. And that's kind of how I see like, cause, like uh, Subaru developing too. Now, if he got his own powers, that would be fucking sick. But right now, while we're seemingly useful compared to other fantasy characters in this show, him having like the AoE provoke taunt or the regression powers to understand how battles would, you know, go through or... Even Shamak to an extent. I know that it's a bot Shamak and it's more of like working like a fucking smokescreen. You can kind of see that he's more leaning towards those like utility, support oriented role rather than being in direct combat, which I think makes more sense for him. But that's pretty much it. Please go give Chibi a like on the video and I will see you guys on the next one.